Uh, good to see everyone out uh, today. A word of praise. I just praise God for all of the children. Had several new arrivals uh, as of late. Um, one of the newborns, the baby boy, uh, the son of uh, Lonnie and Rachel Chaplin, Luke, he's here with us today. So I praise, praise God for Luke and congratulations to uh, Lonnie and Rachel and just all the families. It's, uh, it's awesome. Uh, this morning I'm going to be in Joshua chapter 24 if you'd like to follow along uh, in the Old Testament it's in between the book of Deuteronomy and if you get the book of Judges you've gone too far but Joshua uh, chapter 24 uh, we've been in this uh, series uh, titled Investment Advice and today we're going to talk about the family i uh, going to talk a little bit about the family I want to show you a picture just to get us uh, started this morning <clears throat> this goes back quite a few years this is 1987 my brother Tom and I were in elementary school we're out at a construction site you see the bulldozer and uh, we're there with uh, the family dog uh, Cuddles and there's my grandfather Bruce uh, he was a longtime member at this church and served as an elder and uh, just really had a, a big impact on my life and uh, on so many people uh, in our family and uh, I can remember just uh, thinking about the series we're in invest investment advice uh, and just even as a child, this goes back 42 years old, uh, but uh, as a child, First Samuel, him talking about David and Jonathan and going through several stories of the Bible, be it uh, David and Goliath and uh, Noah and the ark and, and several of those things. But all of these years, I mean, here we are in 2019, and I, I can remember that. And uh, I just want you to think about that. Every single person here, you're, you're here for a reason, and somebody has is, is had a hand in that. Maybe it was your grandparents, maybe it was your parents, uh, uh, a sibling, a neighbor, uh, a co-worker. But uh, we just, I, I praise God for everybody being here today. But I want you to think about your family this morning. I want you to take some personal inventory. And, and just in terms of spiritual formation, you know, kind of where you are, where your family is spiritually speaking this morning, uh, just, just, just think about that and, uh, and take it to heart. So Joshua chapter 24 is where we're going to be. Uh, if you know uh, kind of a little bit of the history here, uh, Joshua was Moses' successor. Moses led God's people out of 400 years of uh, Egyptian slavery and bondage. Then they're in the wilderness for 40 years. And Moses didn't lead uh, the Lord's people into the promised land, but it was Joshua. That, that was the guy uh, that you know, we're talking about this morning. So if you've read the, the book of Joshua, he's a military uh, commander. Uh, he, he's this great military leader. He conquers the Canaanites. They divide the land in, in the land of Canaan. Canaan. This is the promised land, uh, the land flowing with milk and honey. This is the, the land the Lord set apart for his people. And you get to the end here, chapter 24, and Moses, or excuse me, Joshua is getting uh, really uh, old. He's 110 years old. And he's getting ready to breathe his last breath. And he has some counsel. He has some wisdom to share with the Lord's people. And um, it's, it's essentially this. It's to serve the Lord, and you're going to do things his way. If you want God's blessing, you want to prosper, you want to stay here in Canaan and enjoy everything that comes with it, you're going to have to serve the Lord and do things his way. And I think that really has direct application for us uh, and our family. So I'm going to read two verses this morning. Joshua uh, chapter 24, uh, starting in verse 14. The Bible says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestor, ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors ancestor served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Let me, I'm going to read that last verse again. As for me and my household, uh, we will serve the Lord. So you'll see this uh, on your, your notes page this morning, but there's a big decision each and every one of us make. It's, it's this this. It's this uh, fundamental decision on either serving the Lord or we're going to serve self, okay? We're going to serve the Lord or we're going to serve self. Joshua, the line is in the sand, and he, he's taking a step forward, and he says, as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And uh, we all have to make that decision. The Lord will honor your decision. 
Um, and and here's, here's how it goes. When I think about the Bible, it, it starts with a need. Every single person here has need. Um, the Bible says, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So we've all sinned. We've all made mistakes. I personally acknowledge that. I have to raise both hands. I've made mistakes. I've, I've done things I'm certainly not proud of. And I have this need for the Lord in order to be part of his family, to be part of his church. Uh, so do you have a need? Do you admit and acknowledge that personally? Well, if you do, then you have a need for Jesus, right? Second thing the Bible tells us to, to believe. Do you believe Jesus is who he says he is? Uh, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Do you believe? Do you believe Jesus is who he says he is? What else does the, does the Bible tells, tell us to do? Well, we're to confess. Uh, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, what does the Bible tell us, tell us that we are? That we're saved. Uh, we're saved. We're saved from our sins. We're saved from hell. We're saved from condemnation. And we're saved to this relationship with the Lord. The last thing the Bible tells us to do if we're going to serve him is to demonstrate our faith as we go down into the water. We're baptized. We're dunked. And when we go down into the water, the old you, the old me is no more. And when we come out of that watery grave, we're walking in a new direction. We're walking in newness of life. And each and every one of us, we have that decision to make. So you don't have to answer me, but let me ask you this again. Who are you serving? We're all serving someone. We're all serving something. But is your decision to serve the Lord? Because we have to start there. If we're, starting, if we're going to invest in our families, if we're going to make an impression, a positive one in a, in a spiritual manner for our families, it all starts there personally with you and the Lord. Okay? So, if you've made that decision, and I praise God that you have, and if you've not, I pray today that you will. Uh, but in order to build on that commitment, there's certain spiritual disciplines that will help you and will help me and will help our families. Now, this, this message this morning is very practical. It's very application-based. It's not hard to understand, but sometimes it's more difficult to apply for us all. Uh, but I'm going to start right here. It's first is to prioritize biblical community. Man, I praise the Lord that I'm here this morning. I praise the Lord that you're here this morning. There's something special that happens when God's people come together, right? This is corporate worship. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So some of you took part in a Sunday school class or what we call a core group this morning, or you're in a connect group. Uh, those meet certain times of year. And if you're like me, our group, we eat. We enjoy like chili dogs and all this stuff. But we come together in the name of Jesus. We're sharing God's word and uh, we do life with each other, okay? And maybe it's a women's Bible study. Uh, maybe you're on a mission team. We have a uh, different ministry teams here at the church, and, and you've taken part in that. But through that, you enjoy the blessing of Christian community. Let me show you a picture this morning to really kind of drive home what I'm talking about. This was a story I read several years ago. This guy it was a bank robber, well-known bank robber. His name's Willie Sutton. And um, he had pulled off these, these great heists and, and all of this money. But finally, Willie was... He was tracked down, he was hunted down, and they, and they caught him. And um, this guy, he, he conducted an interview with uh, Willie Sutton. They talked about his background, growing up, his family, uh, just some of the traits and, and everything that uh, uh, were exhibited and, and, and family members. And finally, this, the, the person that was doing the interview said this. He said, Willie, he goes, why did you rob those banks? Why did you do it? And he says, uh, he said, uh, because that's where the money is. That's, <laughs> that's where the money is. That's why I robbed those banks. And if you think about that, I would say, why are you here this morning? And I would contend because you know this is where God is. This is where God is. You experience God's presence. You experience God's blessing. Uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, this is what Jesus says. For where two or three gather in my name... There am I with them. That's Jesus' promise. 
So when the Lord's people come together corporately, where two or more come together in His name, He's there. He's there. And we get to experience that in a, in a, in a very real way. Um, I've got another picture for you and uh, Jamie Reagan our worship leader he's talked about this several times everyone's invited to this and next July I hope you mark this on your calendar I know I already have it scheduled I don't, I don't know the exact date but this was down at Del Hollow uh, going back in July we have several people that like to camp have campers or tents or, and all that kind of thing and, and sometimes take, t plan their vacation around this but uh, I think it was Wednesday night we didn't have a service here and uh Everyone came together, and there was a fish fry. And I'm just telling you, the Lord's blessing was on it. Uh, it, it was unreal. But uh, <clears throat> uh, Ray Chesney, he's, he's the master chef, and everybody kind of brought uh, uh, meals. But you talk about just having a good time in the Lord. Everybody wants to have a good time, right? And, and a lot of times we try to do that in various ways. But there's not, there's not anything better than coming together uh, with, with God's family, with your church family, and just, just doing life. You see the kids there with the stick horses and they're riding bikes and there's a playground area and we all had the, the lounge chairs and, and just made several trips, uh, you know, enjoying the grub. But uh, I just encourage you to do that. But that's just an example. That's just a microcosm of what it looks like when it plays, plays out when the Lord's people come together. There's not anything better than that. So if I can encourage you, maybe this is your first time here today. I'm so glad that you're here. Man, I encourage you to come back. I encourage you to take that next step. Uh, if you're not, not involved in a Sunday school class or a core group or a connect group or a ministry team, you're like, man, I've wanted to work for so long. I, I want to get plugged in here. I want to get connected there. Uh, let Joe know. Let me know. Let Austin know. Let, let somebody know, and we'll, we'll get you uh, connected with a ministry team. But there's blessing in that, um, and you'll never regret that. Uh, you'll never uh, regret that. Uh, second thing is this, and, and this gets to be hard at times, but it's reading Scripture. Heard that. Go to church. Go to, you know, read the Bible. And, uh, but, man, this is, this is so important. Um, and I know it, and I, I've felt this way in the past. Maybe you don't like to read. I, I've had a period in my life, I just, I didn't like to read. I didn't like to read books. I didn't want to read them at school, and you're, you're kind of having to do this, and homework and tests. But you can't look at this as some type of academic assignment or endeavor. I, I look at my son at times. He's got this big backpack, and there's a Chromebook, and there's, uh, it's just it's like a big rucksack he's carrying around. And I think sometimes we look, gosh, man, I've got to read the Bible, and it's just weighing me down. But it's how we spend time with God. It's how we hear from the Lord. Uh, what, sh what should I be doing? How should my life look? What kind of decisions do I need to make? What direction do I need to be moving in? But you just read a little bit every day. Maybe you have a smartphone. You use uh, the, the Gateway Bible. They even have audio versions uh, of Scripture. But you start to, to consume this. And so many times, we are what we eat. If you think about your, your thoughts and your language and your behavior, and, and, and it applies to me, you are what you eat. You know, if, only, if all I have uh, coming in is negativity, uh, profanity, uh, things that are inappropriate, well, guess what? There's, there's manifestation and byproduct of that. But if I'm consuming the right things, I'm in much better shape. Had a physical recently. They go through all these tests, you know. You have the blood work. And if they come back and say, hey, mister or miss, uh, you're a little anemic, right? You need to start consuming this and that in order for that to improve. Well, a lot of times, spiritually speaking, we, we get to be a little anemic. If my... My, my thought life, my prayer life, my ministry, all of these things is not where it needs to be. Guess what? I'm usually, I'm not, I'm not reading scripture. Uh, Jesus says, uh, Matthew 4, 4, where it is written, man cannot live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So this, this is like a drink of cold water to your soul. And here's what happens. The Holy Spirit, if you're a follower of Jesus, this is what happens. You're getting ready to make a decision you're getting ready to make a decision, and gosh, you know what? I'm really thinking about turning to the left here, and it's a wrong turn. It's the Holy Spirit that will bring God's Word back to you in that moment, okay? Maybe you're discouraged. Something's going on in your life. It's, it's the Holy Spirit that will bring God's Word up that will encourage you, that will allow you to overcome whatever you're dealing with. So all of those things, so, so important. 
Let me, I've got another uh, <clears throat> passage I, I want to just share with you because this, uh, this has really ministered to me over this past year, especially Deuteronomy chapter 6. Moses is preparing the people. There again, Joshua is the one who leads them into the promised land. But here, here's some instruction. Here's some counsel. Now it's up to you with what you decide to do with it. This was uh, the message for God's people. If you start earlier in this passage... Moses writes, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. It says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Gets to the latter part of verse 6. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. See, that's the personal nature of it. It's on your heart. And this, this verse 7, this is what uh, has hit me so hard this year. Okay? Here's what he says. This is what Moses says. Impress them on your children. Okay? Some of you have grandchildren, you have children. But Moses says, impress them on your children. We're all impressing something on our family members while we are all impressing something on our, our children and our grandchildren. Uh, but, you know, we have to take ownership of this. For me, for an example, if my son knows more about shooting a jump shot than, than God's word, guess what? That's on me. It's not on the, the senior pastor. It's not on... Uh, the Sunday school teachers and all folks are great but this is on me impress them on your children talk about them when you sit at home when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up it goes on to say you tie them as symbols on your hands and you bind them on your foreheads you put them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so what's that look like in the 21st century in 2019 well it may be that you're driving home uh, and there's a quiet moment the day is ended uh, you've finished up work, uh, your children have finished up school, and the, everybody gets the earbuds out, and we get off the phone for just a second or the radio, and we just talk. Whatever you're chewing on, whatever you have been dealing with in God's Word, you talk about that, right? Uh, maybe it's when you get up and you're on your way to school. Maybe some of you drop your children off at school. There's a quiet moment. Everybody's just kind of get, getting the blood flowing, getting ready to get the day started. Maybe you tuck your children in at night. Maybe they're younger and you go up before they go to bed. This is a moment that you might be able to, to, to visit with them about this. It's uninterrupted. There's no distractions, but you pour into them uh, with God's Word. And uh, let me just take you back. I, like I said, I'm 42, and that first picture I showed you this morning was from 1987. I remember that. Working out of the children's Bible, my grandfather reading those things. But all of that will make a difference, not only for today, but for all of eternity. You say, hey, gosh, you know, I just don't have time. You don't understand my schedule. You don't understand it. Look, I got it. You've got to make time. Something may have to go. So, something may have to go in your schedule in order to make time for this. It's, it's that important. I may not watch Sports Center as much. You know, I, I may not watch this program as much. I may not do this, may not get on the sticks uh, in the evening as much, right? Something has to go in order to make time to implement reading Scripture. Third thing is this. Everybody knows this, but it's so important. It's prayer. It's prayer. Here's a quote. I don't even know who to credit on this, but I think it's worthy of sharing. The one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. Everybody just say pray. Pray. You're all with me. The one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. He fears nothing from prayerless studies, prayerless work, in prayerless religion. He laughs at our toil, mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles when we pray. He trembles when we pray. God shows up. He can do what man cannot do. What's impossible for man is possible with God. Max Licato says, when we work, we work, but when we pray, God works. Uh, he does provide healing. He does provide restoration. He does put families back together. Even when we make mistakes, we go to him and he forgives us. He gives us a fresh start. He gives us a new beginning. All of those things through prayer. Let me, let me hit you with this. If it's important to you, God wants to hear about it. If it's important to you, God wants to hear about it. Some of you are probably like me. Uh, sometimes, you, sometimes you find yourselves at night and your mind just races. You're going 100 miles an hour in your mind and you're problem solving and you're trying to put out a fire here and what's the best course of action here? I want to avoid collateral damage here. You know what I'm talking about. It's those talks around the family table. It's something that's going on at work. This is really, this could be detrimental. Man, if this goes wrong, 
this is not good prayer you know God give, provides us wisdom he provides us counsel he will, he will direct us in a way we need to go but we have to stay in contact with him you know if our relationships are going to thrive we have to visit with each other right we have to communicate that's all prayer is you do not have to use flowery language you do not have to be eloquent but you have to be real and I have to be real if it's something going on guess what God already knows about it and he already knows my life and your life but he wants to hear from you and uh, just to be authentic to be genuine and just to cry out to God and, and when my prayer life is going the best there again this is just me I have to have my nose a lot of times in the carpet at the house and there's no one else around uh, but that's, that's where we really get down and get, get to business 1 Thessalonians 5.17 we're getting ready to do a verse by verse study through this and um, uh, on Wednesday nights <clears throat> Joe's going to go through that but when you get to uh, chapter 5 verse 17 the Bible tells us just to pray continually the King James Version says to pray without ceasing so what does that look like you got up this morning you stopped over at McDonald's you got the hot cakes with the sausage and the latte or whatever right and you praise God you got something to eat this morning your heart's beating you're here FCC Michigan Avenue you're going to go home this afternoon. You'll sit across from your spouse. You'll see your children. You'll see a family member. Or you'll see a friend. Uh, you're going to go to work. Uh, most likely on Tuesday, everybody's off on Monday. Praise the Lord. Testify. <laughs> right? So, you know, but we, we just, we thank God and we talk, talk to God about whatever's going on in our lives. This isn't going well. Like you have a family member sick. There's some addiction issue. Whatever you're dealing with, we go to, go to the Lord. You don't have to pray a long time. You just send up a breath prayer. Lord, I need your help. I need your help right here. But I want you to think about that. The fourth thing is this, in terms of investing in your family, is you go on mission. You go on mission. You just start doing work. You start doing work for the Lord. It's not about you. It's not about self. It's selfless. And it's about what the Lord would have you do. We've got a picture here. This goes back several years. I found this in a file. It was 2006. Uh, one of the mission trips we took, this is some years ago, out to Fort Thompson, South Dakota. It was out on an Indian reservation there. And two of the, the most popular things on the Indian reservation there is fast pitch softball and basketball. So there's a group of us here. We enjoyed basketball and had spent a lot of time through the years doing that. So we held a basketball camp and a clinic. So what that looked like is there's a dribbling, passing, shooting station. On this station, it's a prayer station. And after each session, we would, uh, we would have a devotional. And so we, we used basketball just as the vehicle to help pour into people and tell them about Jesus. You will never, ever, ever regret doing anything that's, that's for the Lord and you're on mission. Whatever that looks like, uh, I, I can just tell you, every single time I have been blessed. I'm there with my dad. Uh, this is just, you know, that's a, that's immediate family. Uh, but... Uh, I, was, I was there with my, my brothers and sisters in Christ. You want to get to know somebody, you go on a mission trip with them, and, and vice versa. But there's, uh, there's great camaraderie, there's great fellowship, and um, there, there's eternal reward for that. There, there's eternal reward uh, for just doing what God would have you do. And I just want to encourage you to do that. Maybe for you, what that looks like for your family is you just go out in the lobby this afternoon and you, gra you grab one and one of those uh, FCC Loves Monticello cards. Just get another one. Maybe you've already uh, uh, taken care of the first one. You get another one, and you just you get, get your family together, and we're just going to do this. We're going to help a family. We're going to help somebody, uh, maybe working in the yard, maybe buying someone's breakfast, whatever that looks like. But that's the first step. Maybe you go on a, uh, a short-term mission trip. Maybe you get involved in a, in a local ministry or something that's going on here at the church as a family. And you talk about that. Uh, but there's great reward in that. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run the race marked out for us. I look here in this building this morning, and there are talented people, accomplished people, gifted people, every single person in here. The Lord has marked out a race for every single person here. The Lord has marked out a race for every single person here. And it all comes down to whether or not you and I want to run that race. We're going to be obedient in that and just trust God uh, to accomplish what he's able to. Here's a quote I really like, and man, this is so true. Now, this, this kind of steps on toes here. 
Same here. Lawrence Kimbrough. One of the biggest reasons why most Christians tremble at the thought of witnessing to their own families. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> One of the biggest reasons why most Christians tremble at the thought of witnessing to their families is that those are the people who know them so well and they can smell the slightest hint of baloney on their breath. Woo! <laughs> oh man, that's heavy, right? Because everybody knows they know the real me and my family and they know the real you and the, the quirks and whatever you did back then and this was your nickname and all that stuff, okay? Right? <laughs> People know that. But when you're sincere and you're trying and you're doing the very best you can and it doesn't mean you're perfect, it does not mean you're perfect, but you're trying to do better. You're trying to do things God's way. And you know what? And people start to see a difference. Man, there's something different about her. There's something different about him. Gosh, uh, they're, they're not coming. They said they're not coming out this time. Um, you know what? I, there's a change in that person, and I kind of like it. Uh, I'm, I'm a little convicted by it. I want to be more like them, right? But all of that, all of that is so worth it. But it comes down to that big decision in the beginning. You, you serve the Lord. You make a decision personally to do that. And then these things that we start to do for our family members, we do it for our family mem members, and it makes a big difference. You stay in biblical community. You stay in Christian com community. Uh, you continue reading the Bible, or maybe that's a new thing. You're like, gosh, I don't know. That's really stretching me. You just start, you start somewhere. You start with a verse or two, and just see what God does in that. <clears throat> You start to pray. You pray. There's some things going on in your lives, and uh, I've been there. You know, some things you're like, man, this is this is hard. I'm not sure it's gonna it's gonna work out. You pray. You see what God does in the process. And sometimes, in spite of our situations, sometimes the situations don't change. But you know what? God changes us in the process. He changes us through the prayer. And the last thing is, you you get on mission. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what your passion is. I don't know what your giftedness is. But God knows the Holy Spirit will point you in that direction. But you have to take a step. You have to take a step. And it's so important. This is the last thing I want to leave you with today. And this is the reality of it. John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus says the thief, everybody knows who the thief is. The thief is Satan, is the devil, right? And he's real not giving him too much credit or anything like that but he's real he does have power it's a limited amount but it's it's beyond us the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy and the bottom line is satan wants you out of commission and wants your your family out of commission if there is a chink in the armor he's going to hit in that area right he's going there he wants you out of commission and he wants your family gone you see how families are fractured and splintered and the things that are going on today? That's what he wants. That's his mission. Let me read you the latter part of that. This is what Jesus says in his mission. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Every single person here wants a good life. We all want a good life. We want our families to do well and to be happy and to, to be healthy and all those things. But even in the end, and if we were able to avoid all the pitfall, pitfalls and the struggles of life, in the end, this, these old tents and these bodies we're in, they don't last forever. And you make a decision to serve the Lord, and you keep going, and you'll be with Him forever. And um, it's something we all have to take ownership of. We all have to take personal inventory and take ownership of. It's so important. It's important for you. It's important for your family. It's important for the eternal destination of you and your family. And, and when you get down to it, that, 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 that's, that's all it is. That's all it is. That memory verse, that last verse, Joshua says, as for me and my family... We will serve the Lord. If you need to make a decision today, I pray that you do that. If you need to just take a step in your journey in serving God as a family, uh, I pray that you do that today. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have a song of invitation. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I praise you for all of these good people here, and I pray your blessings upon them. And I pray that you would be with those who are struggling, that those ha may have unspoken prayer requests, that you would intervene, that you would help them, that they would be built up, they would be lifted up, that their family members would feel better if they're dealing with sickness, that they would be renewed. 
Uh, for those who have been working in ministry for a long time and they feel tired and they feel burnout, maybe I just pray that they would be refreshed in their spirit this morning. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you how you stir uh, and move in our lives and, and you change us from the inside out. I thank you for allowing me to be here and just to be part of this assembly. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the blood that was shed on our behalf on the cross. I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you for your compassion. I thank you for your patience, Lord. I praise you for Jesus. I pray, Lord, that if anybody needs to take a step, that they would be uh, just convicted and compelled to do that, that you would give them the courage to do that. Uh, Lord, I thank you for your word, and uh, you would just help us to be the people you created us to be. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen.